Welcome to the third annual Goddess Talk Sessions Global Event. I'm Shan Vanderleek, producer of the popular Divine Feminine Spotlight series and purveyor of feminine articles, interviews, and teachings featuring women all over the world at TransformationGoddess.com, where women gather for a soulful, sensual, and sacred exploration. I've invited 16 priestesses, healers, artists, medicine women, and teachers to circle up with me this year to share intimate stories of how each of these women learned to reclaim their feminine voice and speak their truth. Thank you for stepping into the circle with us. Before we begin today, I invite you to settle in to this moment. If you haven't done so already, light a candle, burn some incense, and take a deep cleansing breath. If you need to pause this recording to do so, go for it. We'll be here when you come back. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Jody Lilly. For over 20 years, Jody has worked as a professional intuitive guide. In 2010, she added Hoop Dance Teacher to her list of offerings, assisting women in finding new ways of coming home to their bodies and cultivating their intuitive, creative expression. In 2006, she met the Goddess of Now and has been channeling her wise counsel ever since. The Goddess of Now guides, encourages, and inspires women in awakening to more of who we are and embracing our goddess superpowers in these turbulent times of alternating chaos and grace. Welcome, Jody. Thank you, Shan. I am honored and excited to be here. It's a pleasure to have you joining <laughs> us today. And Before we came together, I pulled a goddess card for you always like to start out each session with that sharing. And Vesta jumped right out of the deck. And Vesta is all about the home and hearth. Mm. And and her message is that your household situation is improving either through a move or a healthy change in the occupants. And I wonder if that resonates with you right now. A uh, healthy change in the occupants um, in terms of getting healthier in this household, definitely. Oh, great. Um, yeah, yeah. Vesta is a nice card. And that, that feeling of being at home, too, within, even within yourself. I love that card. Yeah, nice. I do, too. And it was just, and it really it was very uh, resonant. You know, when, I, when it came up, it was like, oh, yeah, this is good. This is good. Mm. Let's begin today talking about your journey of reclaiming your feminine voice and how you are now standing in your truth. Uh, my, my journey to reclaiming my feminine voice has gone on for, it's, it's like been like peaks and valleys, it seems like. When I was young, I really rejected my whole feminine nature <laughs> and thought it was, it, I had three brothers and they seemed to have it a lot easier than I did. So I was a tomboy and, you know, kind of rejected the whole feminine thing. And as I got older, I started to realize how powerful it was to be a woman. Um, I've always worked with women. I was a hairstylist for over 20 years and done intuitive work with people. And that put me in touch with women in a, like a lot of women, the majority of the people I interacted with were women. And I got to have some really in-depth conversations with women and really kind of study this from the inside out. Most recently, really claiming the goddess portion of myself, the inner goddess, and really wanting to share that, I started to realize that it's really all about being in your heart. And, um, I went through a period um, of being just feeling kind of lost. I didn't really know what to do with myself and what the things I'd had been doing weren't working anymore. And I realized that I wasn't really being fully myself and I wasn't really being honest about what was important to me or what I needed. I was overgiving and um, I just... I needed to include myself in the conversation and um, and my own sort of desires and what was in my heart. And as I started to be more, um, I, I guess 
more than anything, it was a coming back into myself, um, reclaiming myself that allowed me to really speak what was true for me. And was there the what, body. was there Sorry. was there something? No, that's okay. Was was there something particular, a catalyst for this remembering and reclaiming? Honestly, hoop dance was one of the most <laughs> I bet. powerful things for really finding my voice because it put me in my body in a way that was unapologetic. I felt and that I felt that way when when I um, first experienced belly dancing class. Mm. So I know what, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that unleashed it connected me with the truth of who I was and the truth of my feminine nature. And it was beyond words. It was, I mean, we're talking about the voice, but it really was beyond words. And if I, I, if you've done the belly dance, you know how that, how powerful that is to just really connect with your, your, your pelvic cradle and your hips and your um, just the, the round movements that, that draw us back in the feminine you know, is, doesn't need to talk about a lot of things. Her real power, her voice comes in so many different ways. And then the speaking of the truth comes from that deep resonant place um, is what I found. But I really was at a loss before I found it. And I just became compelled when I, I saw a video that a friend had posted. And I was just completely consumed with it. And at the time, I was 53 years old, and I was sure I, w I had a million reasons why that I could never do that. And, uh, but I was compelled by the videos, and I kept watching them and watching them. And one day I was in a bookstore. I was, I'd been writing Goddess of Now and uh, a lot of that. And I was like, well, I want to know what other people are saying about this. And I stood in the bookstore and Borders bookstore and went to the section uh, that sh the goddess should have been in. And I, I looked and looked and looked and I stood there and all the books were about God, 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 God. And I just stood there and I thought, where are you? What have they done to you? There was the goddess in the alphabet and that was about it. So I did a, a search and um, there was a goddess book in the, they only had a handful and there was one in the fitness section. So I went over there and looked and found, did not find that book at all, but I found a book called Hooping. And mm. I picked it up, and I looked at it, and I put it back, and I kept looking for the book I was quote-unquote looking for. <laughs> and, um, and I picked it up again, and I put it back, and I thought, this is ridiculous. You know, I'm too old, I'm too whatever. You know, I'm sure that's just crazy. Started walking out of the store, and the voice in my head said, buy that book. And I'm like, Okay. Right. So I went back, got the book, bought it, and I'm kind of like looking down, like hoping they aren't judging me. It was so silly, but it was huge. The goddess actually put me in touch with the hoop. And um, so I went home <clears throat> and went through the book, and then I, I got myself a hoop, and I, I was just like, it was a, a huge breakthrough for me. And it, it eliminated, things literally just spun out of my aura. And I started feeling myself come back to myself and I was happy and excited and people around me were just amazed at, I'm like, what happened to you? My neighbor <laughs> stopped me and they're going, oh my God, because I've been running for years. I mean, people saw me being active. My body changed remarkably and within about six weeks, I lost, I don't know, like six or seven pounds. And I wasn't overweight, but I lost about six or seven. My body just carved my spirit, I felt like my spirit was back in my body again. I felt, I, I felt like I had the personality that I had when I was a kid again. Like I came alive to myself again. And that's what comes through in the videos that you share online. Uh, I remember the, fir the first one that I saw, I just, it just brought me so much joy mm -hmm. to see you in such a joyful place. And it didn't even occur to me um, age, gender, and you know, anything like that, just pure joy. Yeah. And that's really what's happened too. I mean, I, I'm a Gemini and I tend to be, feel like I'm ageless anyway, <laughs> but when I'm hooping, it just, it's never been, that's the other thing. It's never been an issue. I've never had anyone 
I've never had anyone say anything disparaging to me. I think because I'm so grounded in it and so excited about it that that's what people feel. And it really is all about the energy. So, sure, sure it is. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad you said yes. I'm glad you picked up that book, listened to your inner voice and went yes. for it. And then are now, you know, now you can celebrate. What comes up for you when you hear somebody say, speak your truth? I, when somebody says speak your truth, I feel um, like there's something, um, I feel like what they're asking for is what's real, what's aligned for you, what you're really about. And have you noticed recently, I would say within the last year or so, more women coming forward talking about this reclamation and, and standing in your voice and speaking your truth? Definitely, definitely. And, and I think that women have been, um, we've been taught not to speak our truth. This sort of rising into what our truth is, is really starting to spread like wildfire finally. But I also feel like there's a big misunderstanding with people about what truth is. A lot of times I hear, you know, it's like anger that comes through or, you know, what people are unhappy with. And to me, what's really true is what we're for. It's really speaking, you know, with confidence about what we're for and what matters to us. I'm so glad you bring that forward because it seems to me, in, in my experience, that there's an awful lot of whining going on. Yeah. And and honestly, do something about it, right? It, it's yes, we all have we all have things that irk us. We all have things that that drive us nuts. But that's not where we live. That's not truly our. That is not our truth. That is not. Uh, not at the core of everything. It might feel like your truth. If you're listening right now and you're feeling awfully angry about things in your life, you can peel away that stuff. You can get rid of all of that gunk by doing your work, by being here. By being here, you're starting to do the work and realize that that your truth is such a beautiful place to speak from. And yes, we're influenced by other people. And yes, we're influenced by the media and we're influenced by our up upbringing and our surroundings and all of those things but getting to the core of who you really are will help you come back and speak your truth reclaim your voice and come forward yes 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 and it's really I really feel the body is the key to that honestly I feel like we have to realign with our bodies we have to come back into our bodies we have to love our bodies um, because that there's so much shame in women's we've been taught to be ashamed of ourselves for a million different in a million different ways and when we reject our bodies then it's really impossible to um, to be aligned with what we are for. That's I, that ang- the anger is like a, is an arrow. It's a direct arrow to what is true for you and what matters to you. And, um, you know, through loving our bodies and really, I mean, that's where intuition comes from. That's where grace, that's where we know in the moment whether to zig or to zag and who is safe to be around. And the other thing with truth, too, when women are really just coming to their, to their voice or reclaiming, it's really important to have people around you who just love and accept you and are willing to hear anything and everything you have to say. That's a, a wonderful way to sort of get grounded again in, you know, your own voice. I, you just made me think of the first time I allowed myself to fall apart in front of a friend, I had been so strong and and carrying so much and was very private and very protected. And, you know, the person that people fell apart to, but not the person that falls apart, right? Mm -hmm. And 
what a liberating, incredibly beautiful experience because she did know how to hold the space. She was available for it. And she didn't keep reminding me of it after the moment was gone. Mm. It was just, I'm here for you. And how do you feel? And what do you need? And anyway, it's just, which might sound silly to some folks, but <laughs> I suspect a lot of the women listening today are, are uh, holding a lot in, stuffing a lot down and, and uh, shouldering so much for their families and loved ones and for their jobs and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We hold so much to be able to trust another person that loves and accepts you completely and be able to share your truth in that moment and not have it and with you know, no judgment. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it is. And, you know, and I think that um, you make a really good point too. being the one who's the one, you know, the one yeah. other people go to, right. the one who never gets sick, the one who never has pro- quote unquote problems. Um, I think in my experience, a lot of women that are attracted to the goddess are of that ilk. Some of the channeling that I've done from the goddess of now, it started with long ago and far away in Celtic culture, you know, when, when things were really breaking down and women went from being the healers and the wise women and the ones who were respected in the communities to being the ones who were cast out and, right. and killed. And a lot of us carry that in our cellular memory. We sure and, do. And um, those, are, those, those are the daughters that she speaks of and speaks to and that hear her. The circle is really important to me. We circle up in my hoop classes. And even when I do bit virtual activations with women and stuff, we circle up because there's power in that circle. Oh, and yeah. That's, no- how we, that's how we heal ourselves and our communities in the world. Yes, yes. And, you know, what you were just speaking of, um, I just felt so much heart when you, were, when you were speaking of that. And I think, you know, women way back when we were, we were separated and we were taught to be, the goddess says we were separated because it was too much to remember. It was too, there was too much pain right, involved right. and that we knew when we came apart, we knew that we would always recognize one another, that we would be safe together. Yeah. Um, but we wouldn't remember until it was time. And it is time. It's time. Yes. And we're ready. We are. We yeah. are. Based on your experience, and I know being in, in your body is a, is a part of your answer, but how can our listeners, how can the ladies circling up with us today, number one, discover number two, embody, and then the third, amplify their voice and their truth? The first thing is to spend enough time, quiet time with yourself that you know what really is true for you. To reflect on what your values really are, what's important to you, sort of ground yourself in that so you know what you're about. It makes it a lot easier to not be pulled off. The voices in the world are so loud and so distracting. So to first just really come home to yourself. And I like to, one of the things the goddess showed me was just to put both hands on your high heart, on the thymus chakra, Mm -hmm. basically between the heart and the throat. Just put both hands there. That really helps to, that's actually a... um, access gives you access to sort of other dimensions if you really can just be be quiet and just be in that position it feels really good and comforting and even before you speak to put your hands there and just feel that connection to your inner self and to grace and know that's there and that's how I was taught to to, to help people come, you know, to connect with the goddess. That that that's a, an easy access place. If you put your hands there, you can feel it feels soothing and you can feel safety. 
um, like that, you're holding yourself. That's something that that I've done as well with others, where you have one hand on on your chest and yes, and with permission, a hand on your partner's chest. You know, for the circle, or, you know, whomever you're sitting next to, or whatever the and and it, and it is. I mean, it's it's such a grounding and beautiful powerful connection yes yeah and i feel like the hands the two hands even if you're not with somebody else two hands on your own high heart are help you complete the circuit to yourself sure you know it just it like it brings that all it, it brings us back um pretty quickly and how else to reclaim and speak your truth really honor what's going on in your body when you're interacting with other people intuition comes in so many different ways and a lot of it is physical and just noticing when you feel <clears throat> comfortable around somebody or uncomfortable around somebody or the thing you really don't want to do you know to honor w what you're feeling and the thing about your voice is that when you're very clear about how you feel about something and what's true for you, people aren't, people don't push you back. No, they people don't. Will, no, they don't resist you. If you're wavering, if you're uncomfortable about it, you're going to get a lot of, of flack in the world. I never wanted to have kids. Well, I thought, I, I thought, I thought eventually someday I would have kids. But it just, I wasn't in those sorts of situations, and I just really wasn't, it, it never really was the right thing for me. And then I got to the point where, like, I'm just not going to do that. And I never got any pushback from anybody about it. I know a lot of women. Do. A lot of women do. <laughs> struggle. Yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you know, your own alignment with your truth, no matter what the topic is, makes you bulletproof, ladies. It sure does. And that, you know, sometimes the part of the amplification process is just saying no, yes. no or no thank you with, without explanation. You do not have to explain yourself any further than saying no thank you. Yes, yes. But you also use that as a guide. If you're getting pushback, stop when you have a moment and come into yourself and ask yourself, where am I conflicted about this? Right. It's a great exercise to be able to get more clear and get more aligned with your own heart. Oh, I love that. Love that. You said, the goddess says, once you know your heart, finding your voice comes naturally. Tell me a little bit more about this quote. Mm. Oh, the, well, the goddess of now presents herself to me as the goddess of the heart. And, um, she, well, I, I have learned that if I don't know what's really true in my heart, how I really feel, I like to be heart led because it always takes me in good directions and keeps me out of things that really aren't good for me, even if it seems like a great idea to my head. And I really want a more soulful, meaningful life. So honoring how I feel in my heart and you know what really is real for me uh, and realizing that we're all individuals and what is perfect I ran down a lot of dark alleys and did a lot of things that really didn't serve me when I was younger because I'm very suggestible and and you know persuasive language will, would take me away and I and then I'd get there and go oh this is horrible I hate this you know <laughs> even if everyone else loved it right um, honoring that you are an individual and your heart really does know best yeah. and how you feel inside if something just you know everybody's doing it but it feels creepy or if it just feels a little uncomfortable to you really honor that because it will that by saying no to the things that we don't really resonate with it helps us to be more clear about what we do and it takes the clutter out of the field it sure does well and it reminds me of that Hafiz quote always trust what the heart knows mm. that came up in an earlier conversation and 
It's such a simple statement. And, and, and certainly it's something we need to practice. They say, whoever they are, that the uh, journey from your, from your mind to your heart, you know, even though it's only so many inches, sometimes seems like a much longer journey for sure. Yes, yes. You know, and I'd like to just expand on that just a touch more if I could. Yes, please. Um, the heart has been given such a bad name. You know, we, you know, it's like, oh, my heart was broken. I can't trust my heart. I, I, you know, like that's always led me in ways that, you know, whatever. It's, I just end up getting hurt when I listen to my heart. You know, we have to, we have to start to realize that the heart is, you know, there's a lot of things that we might think our excitement may in the moment getting carried away isn't necessarily our deepest heart that there's a lot sure. of things that we're attracted to. But the, the, the true heart of us does know. And to really start to connect with your heart, really consciously put your attention there and put your hands over your heart and send healing energy to your heart. And the places that you have been heartbroken, you know, those are opportunities to heal and to know yourself better too. You know, they really are. So I agree. Don't, I agree. Yeah, don't let the don't let the the naysayers dissuade you from honoring your heart because it's pretty smart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm so glad that we were able to come together today and have this conversation. Ah, uh, tell us about your free gift that you have for all of our listeners. It's called the Intro to the Goddess of Now. Yes, it's the intro to the goddess of now. So there's a there's a PDF of um, a, just a, ri- a write up about the goddess of now, and then I have uh, put together a collection of um, I call them uh, goddess of now moments, which are little quick mini meditations that you can do, um, and there's graphics in it, and then just a little a little write up to the side there's 13 of them um my lucky and, number uh, yeah I know. That's <laughs> the goddess number i know it <laughs> so it had, it had to be 13. it had to be 13 it had to be 13 <laughs> yes and um i also um wanted to do a um, goddess i'm going i'm doing a I have a goddess activation um, visualization where I'm going to take you through uh, an experience of meeting the goddess of now in the goddess chamber um, and introduce you to that so that you have more access to who she is. And there, we each have a goddess of now within us. Beautiful. And she's, she's unique to each. So everyone has a different experience of her. So that is my that's, That's so fear. generous. Thank you so much. Remember, ladies, that you can access this gorgeous gift on Jody's speaker page. So it's right there. There's a button that you just click and that will transport you over to her site and you'll be able to get the entire introduction to the goddess of now and all that that includes. Before I turn you loose today, Jody. What truth-telling message would you like to leave us with today? Mm. Um, The truth is the swiftest way to experiencing your joy. Joy um, comes from being true to who we are and, um, and sharing that with the world. So that's, that would be my message. Mm-hmm. So powerful. Mm. It's been a pleasure sharing time with you. Thank you for sharing your truth and your story with us. My pleasure. Thank you so much for this. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm so excited to know that you are doing these talks and getting the goddess out there in so many wonderful ways. It's, it's just does my heart good. <laughs> my pleasure. Thanks again. Thanks, Jan.